Hi, I'm Supercar28, and this is my very first video. Um, I, I've been watching Auntie Fee, um, and I, I love her. I think she's hilarious. Um, I really like the way she gets creative on um, cooking meals on a budget. Um, and I saw some of the comments out there when she did her kitchen sink chicken. So I decided I'm going to do the chicken sink the, I'm sorry, the kitchen sink chicken. Okay, so I put the chicken in a clean sink. The sink is clean. There's no way you will put chicken in a food in a dirty sink. And uh, it's not sanitary. So when you see people do this, trust me, their sink is already clean. It's been cleaned and sanitized. I sanitize mine with hot water and a little bleach. So and I'll probably do it again after um, I clean the chicken after I season up the chicken. Okay, so I'm just pulling off some fatty parts on the chicken and uh, kind of making sure that it's kind of washed off any type of solution that may be on it that they might have put on it at the store before they packaged it up. I uh, make sure that's all off. And I always try to get organic chicken, but Sometimes it's not always possible, but uh, most of the time I get organic chicken if it's a, at a reasonable price. So I've washed the chicken. Wipe my hands, sorry. So I've washed the chicken off. So now I'm going to just season it with the seasonings that I like. And of course you're going to use any type of seasoning that you like, but I... I like certain ones for certain reasons. Um, I'm gonna use um, real sea salt because this salt is 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 uh, a better salt. It's I don't use table salt. I haven't used that for years because I do have high blood pressure. Well, I had. I, it's under control now, and I do believe it's because I've changed the way uh, I eat. I exercise a little bit more, not as much as I should, of course. But, um, and I switched salt. Like, I use this salt right now to season meats and stuff because it's, it's kind of a fine salt. It's not a rock salt, um, uh, meaning this type of salt. Because this salt right here is the truth. I swear, it's, it, this particular salt has, um, most of the minerals that your body needs. And, um, as you can see, it's, it's kind of, it's not a fine, it's just, it's not a fine granulated salt. It's kind of rocky salt so I'll probably throw a little bit of this in there once I'm ready to actually cook the salt so, I mean I'm sorry cook the chicken but right now I'm just going to use the, the fine uh, real salt sea salt so I use a little bit of that and I have here um, onion powder my mom dehydrates everything I swear <laughs> so I get onion powder from her and uh, she takes garlic and puts it in her dehydrator, onions, and puts it in the dehydrator and dehydrates them. So I do like this because it has a stronger flavor than what you would buy at the store. But you can buy like garlic salt and, um, or garlic powder and onion powder and all that and, and uh, use that instead if you don't have something like this. But if you can get your hands on some dehydrated onions and uh, dehydrated herbs at all I, I would suggest it because um, it really is good and we know that onions is good for you this is um, this is garlic powder my mom does this one too she made this for me so I'm gonna put some garlic powder in here on the chicken for some flavor also for high blood pressure it's very good for high blood pressure so uh, if I can use it in food, I will, and I always do. I, I use regular garlic, whole garlic, and I use um, powdered garlic, dehydrated garlic. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of kelp, and the reason why is because kelp is very good for your thyroid. And I did have a thyroid problem a long time ago, but I don't anymore, but um, I, I, a nutritionist told me that if I put kelp in my diet, I might not run into that problem again with my thyroid so I've been doing that ever since and kelp the taste of kelp is a little fishy but only if you use a lot of it 
if you don't use very much of it, don't worry about it. You won't even notice, it's in, notice, that, notice that it's in your food. Just use a little bit of it. But um, it is a little salty too, but it's a very subtle salty. It's not a strong salty. Um, so I also, I'm also going to use um, the, uh, dried parsley. And of course my mother, she dehydrated this too. Love parsley. And just like Auntie Fee, she used parsley too. Uh, parsley really doesn't have a taste unless you're eating it raw. Um, like the, the, the curly parsley is the strongest. The flat parsley that you see at the grocery store is the most mild um, in flavor. Um, and most mild for its detoxing. Um, now I'm just going to say if you're going to use, if, don't ever take raw parsley and um, drink it, make a juice out of it and drink it as a shot because you will feel like you're dying because I've done that. <laughs> Uh, thinking I'm going to detox myself, I juiced up some curly parsley, the strongest parsley out there. And about half an hour later, I thought I was going to die. And <laughs> and after that episode passed, I felt the greatest I've ever felt in my life. So what it does is it goes, it detoxes your body quickly. So don't don't take it like that. Dilute it if you're going to, you know, put lemon juice or something or, or water or something. Don't ever drink it straight. But if you're going to do dried parsley, put it in your food. It's safe. Um, it won't uh, it won't make you detox fast like that, but it will it is a diuretic So it's good for high blood pressure and a lot of times with high blood pressure medication um, It has you're there you're either taking the high blood pressure medication and a diuretic or you're taking the medication that has a diuretic in it So this one is the perfect way to utilize to uh, have a natural diuretic and that way it will not zap your potassium like you know the, the pill will so this this is a, a perfect way to um, eat parsley this is paprika and the only reason why is because of the color and it does it doesn't have a really a, a flavor but it does help things taste savory especially on meats so um, that way it doesn't have like a watered down taste or anything like that um, so I'm also going to use pepper because I like the taste of pepper I'm going to put some of that in there. Now, I'm going to just kind of mix it all up. Make sure that the spices are all make sure it's on. Are all mixed up. And if I feel like I see a little bit too much pink meat, I'm going to put more spices on there. Make sure everything has a flavor. So, I think I'm going to need I'm going to do one more round of spices. So I'm going to do garlic, and remember garlic is very good for blood pressure. I, I feel like all your meals should be healthy for you. Of course that's no, nothing new, but I, I feel like when you are cooking, take the opportunity to make that meal as healthy as possible. So we're going to do onion powder again. Oops. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Boy, that pe that pepper gets me every time. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little bit more of um, kelp for the thyroid. Help the thyroid function properly. Then we're gonna do a little bit more pepper. A little bit more sea salt and this sea salt like I said is way better than table salt it has many minerals that your body needs to regulate bodily functions including metabolism and blood pressure and that's the thing with um, high blood pressure you know that's really a pro that's really a, a lack of minerals um, because what's the first thing they want to do is, is uh, they want to put you on a potassium drip when you have a heart attack you know because uh, muscles start to tighten up and the same things happens when you have high blood pressure so I'm putting in some parsley right now your muscles tighten up around your veins and make that flow of blood through the veins now it has a lot the space is a lot narrower so it raises the pressure and then you drink water or whatever and the veins are very tight so it's not a lot of 
you know, there's a force going through your veins for the blood. So it creates high blood pressure. So I'm not a doctor, but you know, these are things that I've experienced. Not a heart attack, but you know, I thought I was having one a few years ago. <laughs> but just, just the food, I've learned some things about food and what works to bring down blood pressure. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take the chicken that, that we just seasoned and I am going to put it in an oven bag. I cook in these a lot because you can put an entire meal in a bag and it'll be done within an hour or two. I love it and you can put potatoes, green beans, meat, mix it all together, whatever. it would be almost like a pot roast and it, it, it's wonderful. It is like a, a pot meal that lasts for a while. Okay, so I did get the big bag because um, this bag is about, how it says 19 inches by 23 inches, so it holds about an uh, a 8 to 24 pound turkey. So this is how big it is. I hope you guys can see that. So I'm going to put the chicken in this bag and before I do that I'm going to take a little bit of coconut oil and I love coconut oil because it lubricates joints and everything in the body and it doesn't clog your arteries or nothing like that so but it is a fat so you still have to be careful but it's a natural fat so I'm going to put some of this into the the bag here and the reason why is so that the chicken doesn't really stick to the bag, you know? And you can do this with your own cooking oil. It doesn't have to be coconut oil. You can use your own cooking oil and um, for this particular reason. And then I kind of just rub it all around the bag because I don't want the skin of the chicken to like just stick to the bag. So, okay, so now I am going to put the chicken in the bag and also I forgot to tell you guys I've already um, preheated my oven to 350 so that's been going on for it's been preheating for about I don't know I guess an hour because I came home and just turned it on from after I got off work so just put all the chicken in the bag and you're all like why are you using that to put the chicken in the bag why not use your hand you know, I, I don't really like touching raw meat. I don't know why. Sometimes I've been like this since I've been cooking and I don't have any more gloves. So, um, and I don't always use gloves when I cook anyway, but when I have to keep touching meat with seasoning and all that, I, don't, I hate it when it gets in my nails and all that stuff. So, okay. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some vegetables. And I'm going to use some um, green beans. And I had these in the freezer. They're still frozen. I'm just going to take these and throw them in the bag with the chicken. I'm going to use the whole bag. Okay. I'm going to mix that up. And you notice I did not put flour <laughs> on the chicken. Um, I only use flour when I'm actually going to fry something. And sometimes I don't even use flour then. So um, flour is okay. I don't have anything really bad against flour. I just feel like it kind of clogs your colon. So if you have too much, you know, fried foods and stuff, it's probably coming from batter and all that. But, you know, it, you know, you do your own thing. This is what I do. You don't have to do what I do. Okay, so we have that in there. Another thing I wanted to put in there was... Um, some spinach just because spinach is good for you I like I said I really try to make every meal as healthy as possible and this spinach is pretty much just going to kind of dissolve in there but that's fine because I just really want to get the health benefits the vitamin A and things from the spinach so I'm going to throw all of that in there I want the rest of this for my smoothie tomorrow okay and kind of mix that up and So, and I am going to add a cut of onion, just for flavor. 
And I'm not going to put a whole lot because, you know, it's kind of going to disintegrate in there once it cooks. But I'm kind of going to do them in big chunks, you know, just so you can kind of be able, it'll be like something else to eat in the bag, in the, in the meal than just chicken and green stuff. So, yep, putting that in there. Some more. Okay, so I'm going to cut up more and put that in there and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've taken the chicken and all the vegetables, the, the green beans um, that I, the frozen green beans and the spinach, the organic spinach that I usually buy all the time for smoothies and stuff like that or salads. I, I took a bunch of this and put it inside the bag with the seasoned chicken the uh, the oven bag and I did um, put a little oil at the bottom so the bag does not stick <laughs> to the pan and um, kind of just wrapped it up and I got I have my oven on 350 here I don't know if you can see it can I yeah it's not gonna okay so I have the oven on 350 it's been on 350 for quite some time and um, so it's all warm and ready to go so I'm going to cook this probably about an hour and 10 minutes. Um, I don't know when it starts to, when everything, it starts to kind of bubble. Um, I suggest putting a few holes in the bag, like, you know, with the knife, you know, just put a few holes in the bag because that way, you know, it won't, when it starts to basically steam, it won't, won't um, just rise, create a big air bubble in the bag. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to put that in the oven right now and let that cook and I believe I am going to make rice I know most people like to have chicken I'm sorry uh, potatoes with their uh, chicken um, I really I I'm a rice person and I love jasmine rice because jasmine rice cooks really fast so um, when the chicken is about done, um, probably 10 minutes before I take it out, 10-15 minutes before I take it out, I am going to make some rice and um, take the drippings from the chicken and kind of pour it in the rice. So I'll show you guys that when that's done. So I'll see you till then. Okay, so the chicken's been cooking for about an hour and 20 minutes because um, I started watching TV and something The Matrix was on, so it's one of my favorite movies. So um, I took it out. And um, before I took it out, it was kind of bubbling, you know, around in this area and all that. And you can see where the spinach was, is. It's kind of stuck to the bag, not too bad because we put oil in it. That's there. So we're going to mix that up. So what, I, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to um, slice the bottom of here so it can kind of all fall out into the pan. And as you see, we put the oil in so it doesn't, doesn't didn't stick. So gonna let it all fall out into the pan and if you have a better way of doing this please let me know I I haven't found a better way yet so um, then just kind of dump the contents to the pan okay so and you see it's made a lot of juice and it's not a thick gravy. It would have been if I would have put flour on it, but you know, I like I was saying earlier, I don't really use a lot of flour unless I feel like I need to fry something or whatever. And even then, I don't always use flour. So, um, yeah, so it came out. There's the onions. Here's the green beans. Get this out of the way. Came out really good, so I'm just going to mix it up a little bit and I wanted to put it in this pan so I can store it in the fridge when we're done you know eating it for the evening so I can store it in the fridge so yeah chicken looks really good I can smell the spices 
I really smell this the onion powder and the garlic okay all right so um I did make I'm gonna try and move the camera over to the rice I made the rice and um, the jasmine rice because it doesn't take very long to cook. So the only thing I did is I took um, about two and a half cups of water to two cups of rice. So I put two and a half cups of water in the pan with about a tablespoon of butter and I let that come to a, a low boil and then I added my two cups of rice slowly just kind of pouring it in and then you know slowly stirring it and making sure it didn't stick to the bottom while it was cooking and um, once it got all the, um, the water was covering the rice I uh, turned down the turned down the heat and uh, to like a low medium low heat heat setting and then I covered it with a uh, with the with the lid so it can finish cooking and here's the lid oops this is the lid this so I let it I let it simmer for about eight to nine minutes and then you know once I saw that it was done I kept checking it then I added a little bit of butter um, and I, I like a particular type of butter um, keep my butter that I don't use in the in the freezer so I like I'm not endorsing this company or anything it's just uh, I like this particular butter um, because it's it's got a nice flavor um, it's it's a mild flavor it's supposedly made with real milk um, and it's unsalted I always use unsalted butter because we're always trying to watch out for um, foods that can raise your blood pressure so I, I use unsalted butter on in everything even when I bake I use unsalted butter okay so now what I'm going to do um, I'm going to put some of the chicken drippings into the rice just so it can have some flavor I mean the rice has a little a rare mild flavor anyway but you know it's just something extra. I hope you guys can see that. So I'm just going to take some of this. And you may get a little bit of green beans in there or a little spinach. But that's okay because it's all going down the same way. <laughs> and you can see, you can see those spices right on top of there. That's the parsley. So I'm just going to keep adding the juice until it gets a certain color that I feel that that let me know that it's uh, saturated with some chicken flavor and spices. It smells really good. You, I wish you guys can smell it. It smells really good. Am I on? Yeah. I'm on. put a little bit more in there yeah so it's starting to turn lightly brown the color of the of the chicken drippings and I am happy with that so I am going to turn off my oven and I'm going to plate it and let you see let you guys see what that looks like okay just a little tidbit if um, I just tasted the food is very good um, it's very savory but it does need more salt and um, I was when I was talking earlier about the Celtic sea salt this is a perfect time to use this type of salt in here because like I said it has basically all the minerals your body needs and even though it's like it's not a refined salt it's more kind of like a rock type of salt. It'll dissolve within the liquid from all the gravy and stuff and juices from the chicken and 
and um, everything it'll dissolve really quickly so uh, yeah this is a perfect time to add that in case you know you cook your dish because you can't taste raw meat when you're seasoning it up you, you don't know if it, it's got enough seasoning until you cook it so <laughs> so um, yeah this is a perfect time to add this particular type of salt or any other salt that you use but I would try to use a salt that's definitely good for your health so so don't use a lot of this salt I mean don't go in and just grab like a, a big handful you know just grab a few pe pinches of it and just sprinkle it in because it is salt it's real salt so um, this salt can be very salty really quickly if you use a lot of it but this is very good salt so I, I, I hope you guys try it and like I said when you cook your meal and you find out oh well it needs more salt so that's a perfect time to use that particular kind. Okay, thanks. Oh, I mean, is it on? Yeah. Okay, so this is it. Um, here's the green beans here, the chicken and the rice. And it's a little small slice of bread because there is some gravy coming off the chicken and, and the green beans. So, you know, you can use that to sop that up, I guess. Anyway, um, I did make like um this is not kool-aid although we drink kool-aid too but this is a uh, herbal tea and i'm going to do a video on this i make a lot of ice herbal teas and i usually make um um teas that have no caffeine so they won't um give you the jitters or anything like coffee does um and it will not raise your blood pressure this is actually a hibiscus tea and it's very good you guys really should try it but i'm going to do a video on how to make that um herbal um, hibiscus iced tea and a couple other teas that I always make so um, yeah so this is the finished product I hope you guys try it Auntie Fee thank you so much for um, putting out our little secret in the community well, a lot of us black folks do season our meat in the kitchen sink it's okay <laughs> so um, thank you for that um, so I hope you guys try out this recipe and enjoy thank you Thank you.